Right, by this point, you have already learned about Punnett squares. You know how to solve genetics problems with traits and alleles, big B, little b, dominant, recessive. Maybe you can go so far as to do dihybrid crosses as well too. You talked about sex-linked traits, probably multiple alleles and blood types as well too. In all those examples, probably somewhere in your textbook or somewhere online, you've heard of this dude, Mendel. Mendel is the man. Father of genetics, many of him considered to be. Uh, we need to give him some credit for all of the stuff that he's done. This guy was a monk, but he had a fascination for numbers and data and pea plants and pea plants. Very cool. So this guy was kind of creative. He took a bunch of pea plants in this giant garden that he had and he started having them make babies with each other. Some people might think that's kind of strange, but he was doing little scientific experiments. So what we really want to talk about here is giving him credit for what he's done in terms of research methodology, which he probably wasn't thinking about back then, but we all understand the genetics. This guy didn't know the, about the existence of genes and alleles, yet his numbers and predictions all check out and every all the other evidence that's accumulated now with our understanding of DNA and alleles and genetics still matches with what this guy has put forth. That's why um, people like to crown him the title of father of genetics possibly. So generated lots of numerical data. He did a lot of quantitative measurements. He did replicates, which means he repeated his results. What does this help with? It ensures reliability. And in science, we want experiments to be reproducible and repeatable. It ensures precision that repeat measurements are actually matching the, re the previous measurements. Accuracy means that the numbers are actually representing what the actual data is supposed to be. Uh, it helps to eliminate anomalies. When there's weird ones, we want to figure out if that's supposed to be something that's supposed to happen or if that's something we just need to repeat because of other unforeseen uh, circumstances. It allows us to do statistical tests. We can repeat entire experiments. This has pretty much become standard practice in science. You can't publish a paper or you can't become famous or sell a drug unless somebody else can check your data and repeat your experiment. It's part of how science works. So he demonstrated these early principles of inheritance. And like I said earlier, this stuff still checks out. All these little Punnett squares and things like that. Of course, we've discovered things that are a little bit more complex than just simple dominant and recessive, but a lot of traits are controlled that way, but they can get more complicated as well too but they're all related to these basic principles of inheritance which we now attribute to Mendel we give names like you know the first Mendel's first law and Mendel's second law the law of segregation and the law of independent assortment as well too pretty cool stuff so he looked at specific traits in these pea plants like their height their color their smoothness or wrinkledness and was able to do all these crosses and generate tons of data if you get a chance you should try to solve a problem using some of his original data and then see if you can make these predictions that he's also found as well too published in 1866 ignored for 30 years so sad not a lot of love for pea plants at that time, but now uh, this dude gets the respect that he deserves. So he really deserves credit for his research methodology. These are nice diagrams that help you to distinguish between these, these two words, basically precision and accuracy. And it's important that you know the difference between precision and accuracy. So for example, on this particular target right here, you can see all the arrow shots are clustered around the same place. These are very precise measurements. So whoever's shooting these arrows is a precision shooter, but they keep missing the center target. So the accuracy is low, but the precision is high. So in this case, this is high precision, high accuracy. And we're trying to aim for that high precision and high accuracy when we're doing biology uh, investigations and experiments. With physics, it's a lot easier to get precise measurements. A lot of those rules dropping the ball from the same height gravity you get a lot of good nice consistent data at least with the basic physics experiments and principles but for biology there's so many unknowns and random errors and systematic errors that can show up so it's really important that the experiments that, that we design are very well controlled and very well planned out so we can do whatever we can to minimize any possible sources of error so we can aim for precision and measuring the actual values that we're trying to get. So precision and accuracy, make sure you know the difference in there. And don't forget about this man right here, Go Mendel.